Hey guys. I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies. And we tangent. He so was sorry. stood behind the camera like a proud <laughs> dad, just like come on smiling at us are we in focus because i think your arm just went in and i don't want it to refocus it's, it's got a thing around okay okay like an Love orb no. Gra no. grandma <laughs> not an orb <laughs> um, what's up everyone <laughs> i almost forgot and Did just like staring at you i like, know <laughs> I, I was like why are you looking at me is there an orb on me yes uh, it's grandma <laughs> She's here with both of us. Um, there was. Did I ever tell you about the video where my dog Louie saw? Well, I caught the orb on video. Yeah. And Louie saw it. Like, okay. Did I tell you about this? No, I okay, don't. Okay, let think me so. explain. So I was laying in bed with Mosby and Lou. And um, for some reason, I was recording them. I think it was because she, Louie was like playing with Mosby in a cute way. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, Louie like turned her head this way and then this way and like looked up like she was following something. And so I went to watch the video back and I saw an orb Ooh. go the exact direction that Bet she was looking. Was <gasps> yeah. I have it saved somewhere. I think it's like on my Snapchat or something, but it was like one of the creepiest things. And a lot of paranormal stuff happened in that house. Yeah. Well, speaking of paranormal stuff, we've been getting a lot of suggestions to do ghost stories spooky season is coming up and uh spoiler alert you guys are gonna get some <laughs> so just be patient yes <laughs> we are gonna um put up a ghost stories form for you guys to submit your ghost stories because we want them and we'll probably do this more than once because i i like a good ghost yeah. story yeah they're good stuff i am super into ghost stories i used to like I don't even care if they're not real <laughs> my own ouija boards <gasps> i know I know. It's bad news bears. You're so worried about the D to, word. But I know. <laughs> I know. I love tempt and fate. I yeah. guess. Yeah. I don't really though, because here's something that I wanted to tell you. Oh, that's been happening. Okay. So, Ollie, like maybe a week ago, within the last week, um, Shane was putting him to bed, and mm -hmm. he came out of his room, and he was like, "Um, I need to get a chair. I need to look in the attic." And I'm like, why? And he said, because Ollie kept pointing to the ceiling and saying that he heard a sound. <gasps> and so Shane got up and he's like, there's nothing up here, bud. Like he didn't see any remnants of an animal. He heard nothing. Like it wasn't raining. A bat just flies out. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we have his sound machine turned up pretty loud oh, in yeah. his room. Yeah. Like it's pretty hard to hear. Oh, for sure. So now he is pointing to the ceiling and saying he sees Bubba crawling on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he, Shane came out of his room. Holy fuck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That just almost gave me a contraction. <laughs> there is nothing scarier than babies crawling on the fucking ceiling. I know. I know. Shane came out of his room with just like a sheer terror face. And he's like. Um, Ollie said he can see Bubba crawling on the ceiling and I had to tell him that no Bubba's in his crib and he just kept pointing and saying Bubba's crawling on the ceiling. And so this morning he woke up and I went to get him out of his room. And Forrest is just on the <laughs> ceiling. Like, oh, fuck. He was not well, lying. goddamn. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> no. So I, I open the door and I turn off the sound machine and Ollie starts pointing to the ceiling again and he goes Bubba crawling Bubba crawling and I said Bubba's in the living room forces in the living room and he goes Bubba crawling on the ceiling and I'm like you saw Bubba crawling on the ceiling and he said yeah <gasps> so um we have to move <laughs> <laughs> or I think it's Jonah oh yeah okay that's sweet I hope it's Jonah <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who don't know I had a um a second trimester miscarriage. Uh, my son had Down syndrome and he didn't make it. It was not a choice of mine. Um, but we found out at our 16 week appointment that he no longer had a heartbeat. Um, and we named him Jonah after we found out that he was a boy and that he had Down syndrome um, because I just didn't feel right not giving him a name right. and honoring him in that way. <laughs> so, um, 
we always intended to tell Ollie that he and, and Forrest that they have a brother and yeah. that he just lives in heaven. Right. Um, and now I think Ollie knows and he's crawling on the ceiling. Did I ever tell you? I don't think I, t this is another thing I didn't, I didn't tell you. Do you guys give a shit about dreams? <laughs> Because I know we did. I a read a lot episode. of our or I read a lot of our inboxes. They do. Okay, <laughs> they truly do. So, um, I had a dream that I now know was a premonition. <gasps> and I don't think I've ever talked about it on the podcast. If I have, I definitely don't remember. Um, but after after we lost Jonah, I had a dream that I was in my childhood bedroom and I was breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Two babies, one on each boob, okay. okay? And then my sister was standing in the doorway talking to me, and then Shane came in the door to talk to me, and I, <laughs> my shirt was over the babies. Like, they were underneath my shirt. <laughs> this is a dream, remember? It's fucking weird, makes no sense. And I went to lift up my shirt to, to show him the babies, and they were puppies. <laughs> and I was like, look at these puppies. No. <laughs> But but I was like, oh my god, these are puppies. <laughs> Where did my kids go? Where are my babies? And now it's funny for me to tell it, but in the dream I was so sad. Oh <laughs> that no, my, they're <laughs> puppies. <laughs> and my babies were gone and I was breastfeeding puppies. And so I started throwing it's about to get sad. I started throwing the puppies? Blankets <laughs> off the bed okay. because I was searching the blanket thinking I'd just drop my babies and somehow these puppies <laughs> got on my boobs. <laughs> these puppies got on my puppies. <laughs> yes. Sure. And I, I'm screaming and crying, where are my babies? Where are my babies? Oh and my at God. this point, I had lost two babies. So I had oh. lost Sarah oh, and I had really lost sad. Jonah. I know. I didn't even put that together. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I look up and in the doorway is a two-year-old little boy with blonde hair. <gasps> And I started crying because I thought that was Jonah. I thought that was him coming to me in a dream saying, I'm okay, mom. Here I am. But it wasn't. It was Ollie. Ollie. Yeah. Wow. I remember. I know. Such goosebumps. I remember looking at Ollie one day and real like he was standing in my door and I got the chills and I'm like, oh my, oh my God, God. That I was my dream. I remember you. You were in my dream. Like I saw, I have chills right now. I saw him in my dream. Wow. Mm -hmm. Right after I was breastfeeding puppies. <laughs> and he's like, hey, when you're done with that, Bubba's crawling on the ceiling. <laughs> Can we fucking do something? Yes. Wow. Uh-huh. Ooh, that's good. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> For that. You just came out the gate with some I know. Well, really he did ones. the whole Bubba on the ceiling thing this morning, and I texted Shane, and he's like... Fuck, this is not okay. <laughs> There's nothing scarier no. than kids seeing things that you can't. So Noah used to have a woman named Debbie. Remember <laughs> Debbie? Yes, I remember Debbie. <laughs> the little Debbie. <laughs> no, I don't know. She might have been big Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> She's just average Debbie. <laughs> She's like, yeah, very average. Plain Debbie. Yeah. Um, but she, he would talk to her and I could hear it over his baby monitor and he would say like... Debbie, and at that point, he didn't know anybody named Debbie. Where the fuck did you come with, up with that name? <laughs> Debbie? Yes. Like, I was shocked. So then, we would ask, like, oh, where is Debbie? And he'd be like, here. He would point to the ceiling or point around him. Now, I have heard if the spirits that they're seeing are high, yeah. that's good. Well, he said she was very nice. Well, Bubba and Debbie were on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> so And so I would be like, what does Debbie want? And he said, home. I was like, our home? <laughs> or like, make her own you, home? <laughs> make you her home? <laughs> or like, what? <laughs> Noah's just two and all of a sudden starts wanting to make quiche. <laughs> and go by Deb. <laughs> He's like, can you just call me Deb? I'm an adult now. Can you take me to Marshall's? I heard they have some Ray Dunn. <laughs> He's crocheting. <laughs> oh, wait, that's me. I've um, got a Yankee Candle coupon. <laughs> but... Debbie was also a brown woman, he said. Mm. So that was interesting, too, because, again, we live in an area where, like, yeah, not a very common thing. It's not diverse here at all, yeah. No, not at all. And at that point, it, he definitely didn't have a lot of, like, diverse yeah. people in and out of his life. So right. that was something. I don't. I just really feel like he saw. He was seeing someone, yeah. Her, but she was a very lovely woman. She, yeah. He was never afraid. If anything, when she was with him... 
he was like, he calmed down. That was what would freak me out. He would be crying at night and then he'd be like, fine. And then he'd start giggling and then he would, I would hear him talking to Debbie and I was like, (laughs) but also I was like, they seem like they're having a good time. (laughs) I'm going to let this go. I'll allow it. (laughs) Oh, Debbie, if you start some shit, (laughs) I swear to God, if I hear you off the ceiling this instant, (laughs) could you just come down here, please? I don't feel if Bubba's on the floor, we're not, we're not afraid. Honestly, not true. Really? Yeah. Um, my sisters and I have seen things crawling on the ground and it's way fucking scarier. Spiders? Well, you know what? I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to figure, we've seen ghosties and I'm trying to figure out if it would be scarier to see them crawling on the ceiling Dude, or across so the floor. it's so much scarier on the ceiling, I feel. <laughs> across the ceiling? But also if they're on the floor, I'm like, oh, they're going to touch my feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the floor is lava. Yeah. The floor is bubba. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, th- okay. <laughs> so, Uh-oh. I didn't think that I talked in my sleep. Okay. And I don't think I do. Yeah. But last night, I apparently responded uh-huh. in my sleep. So, I laid down <laughs> and I told Shane, I vaguely remember this. The last couple nights have all kind of like run together. I had a session last night an hour away in Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Um, and I didn't get home until after nine. So like it was a long evening for me when I got back. Yeah. And I was laying down and I vaguely remember saying to Shane, my body is tired, but my mind is not. Right. And so I'm having trouble falling asleep. But then I must not have had any fucking trouble because I was asleep. (laughs) Because all of a sudden here I am sleeping. Yeah. So today Shane was like, do you remember... Uh, what I asked you when you woke up last night? And I was like, excuse me? Wait, what? And he said, good, that makes me feel better. And I'm like, what the fuck happened last yeah. night? He said that after I said that my my body is tired, but my mind is not, that he asked me maybe like 15, 10 minutes later. That's not the order you usually say it in. <laughs> <laughs> 10, 15 minutes later. Um, hey, you still up? And I guess I said, what do you want? (laughs) And he said, you want to have sex? (laughs) Of course he did. I knew where that was coming immediately. (laughs) Well, he goes, I asked you if you wanted to tango. I said, you asked me if I wanted to tango? And he goes, well, I said, do you want to have sex? (laughs) And I said, what did I say? And he goes, you said nothing. He just (laughs) rolled over. And now that I know you don't remember it happening, I feel better <laughs> because I hoped that you would say no to me yeah. instead of just like completely ignoring me. <laughs> you know yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. But I don't remember ha- having that conversation at all. Oh my God. That's hilarious. Corey talks him to sleep like frequently, but he'll be like falling asleep. Is it better now that he's not on midnights? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wish. Well, yes. But when he drinks. No, that's mm. what it happens a lot. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hey, man, do you know that you're like fucking saying words right now <laughs> yeah. to me? And I'm responding. And no, he I doesn't. Huh. It's not because he's drunk either. It's just because he's tired. Because when he's super tired from work, he'll do the same thing. Yeah. It's very jarring because I'm like, I thought we were having a legit conversation. You're talking about Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> did you hear anything I just said? And are you about to make a premonition? About Queen Elizabeth? Mm-hmm. Is she a real person? <laughs> she Queen Elizabeth? She's alive, right? She's still the queen. Sure. Who's the queen right now? Hey, Is it Elizabeth? Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Help us. <laughs> Mr. Britain. <laughs> I don't know. Lot. Or is it the UK? What's the difference? There is a difference. And I would like to know it. Is the U- <laughs> is Britain in the UK? I feel like the UK is bigger. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're so good at geography. Yeah. <laughs> The UK encompasses a whole kingdom <laughs> and it's united. Mm. And Britain's just like a part of it. Uh, well, did they exit it with Brexit? What the fuck is Brexit? <laughs> you didn't know about Brexit? Breakfast? <laughs> no, Brexit. <laughs> just kidding. I do want breakfast now. <laughs> do you know about Brexit? I don't. They le- I think they left the UN? No, the United Nations isn't 
We should talk in geography. <laughs> I loved how I tried to talk about Canada as if I knew anything about it last week. You tried. And I really I, did. And you know what? We got a conversation started mm-hmm. and that was the goal of it mm-hmm. because we are not smart. <laughs> okay. Honestly, we I don't know not. what a prime minister is. <laughs> we are not. What's the difference? <laughs> I don't know. Does he is he in charge of a faith and a country? That's what I'm saying. Is he like a president or is he like a king? He's in charge of all the ministers. <laughs> I don't know. Who's the regular minister? <laughs> the prime one. And then is there like an okay one? He's yeah. the prime. And then so this it comes one's in two like- days. <laughs> yes. The Amazon Prime Minister. <laughs> oh. So what we're saying is. We don't know dick about shit. This is an educational (laughs) podcast, and we're going to teach you things. This is us just doing our best. But we did kind of getting into current Mm events-y things. We want to say, we're not a current events podcast. No. Um, It's very difficult, I'll, I'll be honest, like, this whole last week, I've been on the verge of crying, like, with what happened in the South, like, with the hurricanes. Yes. Um, I think it was Louisiana got hit the hardest. Yeah, but oh, then the flooding that's happening in um, New Jersey and New York yes. and areas like that. Yeah. So there's that. There is the horrific, horrific fucking law going on in Texas yep. that is a total infringement on women's rights. Yep. Um, that's terrifying for anyone who is in Texas right now who's affected by that law. Um, obviously the 13 lives that were lost, um, from our service, our military, what's going on in Afghanistan in general, in general, um, it is overwhelming. It's hard to get on this couch and just talk about things when all of this chaos is happening in the world and there are people who are suffering. Um, so we're doing the best that we can because we also know that. A lot of you guys come to us f- for an escape from that. Yes. Um, we hear that a lot. And so we want to provide that for you. It's not that we're just ignoring it or that we don't care about it. It's that some people need a- an escape from that reality yeah. for just an hour of their time yeah. because it's a lot. It's overwhelming. Yeah. It And it's sad for us as well. Like it was really hard for you to research. Yeah. Especially being pregnant. And not that that makes me any, but like, yeah, thinking about, we've said before that it's hard for us to do true crime in general, but it's harder to do true crime when children are involved, um, mm-hmm. especially the level of torture those children went through right. was horrific. So like that was hard enough already on me. I didn't want to pile it on by talking about also everything else that's going right. on in the world. And well, and a lot of it hadn't unfolded fully yet yeah well Um, that's the other thing that we want you guys to remember a lot of i'm going to have a child soon we're doing a lot of these out of order or trying to do things in advance or getting you know so a lot of these it might seem like wow you didn't speak about something that just happened yesterday we could have recorded a week ago you could have recorded two months ago you're gonna hear stuff come out in october that we recorded in august or that we were recording right now and like you're even gonna hear a difference like we're on new mics right now but some of the ones coming out in october are on our old mics yes so um we're doing our best just know that like we care we We care care deeply about these things um we are doing what we can when we can but we're also just two people who are highly invested in Mm -hmm. these situations um emotionally because we're very empathetic people uh so yeah i just wanted to note that um and i also that's i guess a good segue to saying uh our bonus episode that's coming out this week our exclusive episode that's coming out this week um is going to be a mental health check-in because we, we need to. <laughs> we need to. And we've noticed a lot of you might need to as well. Yeah. We've noticed it with um, in the ladies and fangents group in a lot of DM messages that we're getting, which, again, I can't get back to all of them. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I hardly can read all of them. Um, but we understand that there, there's a lot of people going through a really hard time right now. And it's important to talk about it. One thing that we're not ever going to stop doing is talking about our mental health and uh-huh. advocating for mental health in general. Yep. Um, we are not glamorizing or romanticizing 
having mental health disorders. It's not easy. And we're also not playing it off um, as if it's just like a funny, quirky thing that yeah. we're that's something that we're going through. I, I shouldn't have even <laughs> I shouldn't have to say that because the person who said it listened to a maybe a minute of uh, the last couple podcasts that we have. So yeah. they don't know us the way that you guys do. And I'm, I'm hoping that you guys know, but if there's any new listeners, if we discuss our mental health issues, um, it's because we have them. We've not been allowed to talk about them for the majority of our lives. I didn't know I had them. Like that's what's crazy is I, st when we started this podcast, I did not think I had any Anything. mental health disorders. Yeah. And I, through the process of conversating with you and learning about different things, felt confident enough to um, seek out a therapist. And now I've been diagnosed with PTSD, ADHD, uh, panic, panic disorder. disorder. So generalized anxiety, like, and Sierra as well has been diagnosed with mm -hmm. Anxiety and depression. Uh, generalized PTSD. anxiety, PTSD, depression. I'm assuming ADHD is kind of encompassing all of that. That's right. what I think that I got misdiagnosed because all of the medicines that I've taken for those mm -hmm. don't work. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that all of those besides a PTSD could be a result of a bigger... Well, that's the hard thing with ADHD and anxiety is sometimes ADHD can cause anxiety and depression. Yes, and other times, anxiety and depression can cause ADHD. So it's a real chicken and the egg situation. Right. Um, but that's the important part of this conversation is so many people felt confident then going and advocating for themselves, able to articulate things what that they had feeling. been thinking and feeling. Mm -hmm. So not feeling crazy in the feelings that they're feeling. Yeah. Um, so we're never going to stop doing that. If that puts you off as a new listener, please find another podcast. We're yeah. fine with that. Yeah. There are podcasts that I listen to five minutes of and I'm just not interested in them. I don't take the time out of my day to write a comment because in I'm not trying to change them as people or change other people's minds. It's just not for me. And it might not be for you. And that's great. Yeah. Go find another one. That yeah. is, we're not going to change how we do this because it's important to us to be as transparent and as vulnerable as possible. Right. And if you don't like it, because you don't have to stay here. I know that it was really hard for me to feel confident enough because I felt like the things I was thinking, I was the only person thinking yeah. them. And Same. the only thing that made me have any kind of solace is hoping that someone somewhere in the world felt the same. And through just having conversations and being vulnerable, we've realized that so many people yes. have these thoughts and feelings yes. and the growth that we have seen in our community and the confidence and just how many people have reached out and told us like, you made me want to go to therapy. Yeah. You made me finally get a diagnosis. And how learning about their diagnosis has changed the way that they view the world yes. and experience the world for the better. Yeah. Because it is so much easier to go into any situation feeling confident knowing, okay, I know how my brain's going to respond to this situation. And I have a toolkit full of resources yeah. to help me battle, challenge this battle. Yeah. Deal with this. Climb yeah. this hill. <laughs> and the person who said something said it in a way of like, it's too heavy of a subject. But that's the problem is it is a heavy subject and it doesn't get talked about enough so that people feel like they have to hide it. Right. You don't have to hide it. Having a mental illness doesn't mean you're broken. It just means right. you're different. And being different is not a bad thing. If right. we were all the same, the world would absolutely suck ass. Right. So, but it is important to know how to deal with... To, to live your, through it. Right. Because why would you... Let's say that I had something physically wrong with my leg. Mm -hmm. And I've been walking around in these crappy shoes all the time. And they're like, hey, there's a shoe for you that you can put on that'll fix your height difference in your leg. <laughs> yeah. I'm just trying to think of something. Yeah. You know what I mean? And... You and can what, experience the world so much easier. If you just put this shoe on, mm -hmm. why don't you just put that shoe on? And then I do, and it changes everything. Right. Do you think I'm going to talk about it? Freak yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> that's exciting. Right. And I thought my whole life that I was broken. And it turns out I just needed this little piece to fit. Right. And then I could live life better. Right. Easier. Or not alone. Yes. So. And somebody else who had that shoe was open enough to talk about it. And that's how I learned that I might need it. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Girl, get here? your shoes. Girl, get your fucking shoes and get so. out of our comments. <laughs> Thank it you. It was one person. Night. Truly, it was one person, and it was a person who I know has not listened to us uh, to to get to know us in our entirety. Not even so a little bit. Um, but 
The problem with not addressing a comment like that, because I know it would be easy. It would be very easy for us to just breeze over a comment like that, ignore it. It's not a big deal. In in the grand scheme of things, we get so many positive comments, which we're so grateful for. But I would never want someone to read that comment and think, I can't talk about my mental illness. I can't advocate my, for myself because I'm being dramatic. I'm romanticizing it. I don't actually have this disorder that I think that I might have. Yeah. And now they're quiet and they're alone yep. and it's stigmatized all over again. Yep. And it's funny because in one part of his comment, he was saying it was too heavy of a subject. And in the next part, he was saying that we we talk about it too lightly. And it's like... That's the problem here, bud. Exactly what you're saying. There is no right or wrong way to navigate because it is a heavy subject. Right. And if your coping mechanism is to make light of it and joke of it so that you can get through your day, right. by all means, do it. Cope. Because all we care about is that we see you tomorrow. Yes. So. God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> Today's topic is about imaginary friends. <laughs> Which, and we have an imaginary enemy. <laughs> No, just he's kidding. Very real. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He's not our enemy. We're just Joshua. Uh, I never clapped the first time. Oh, oh well, that's a problem for future me. <laughs> um, okay, so two things I'd like to address. One, yeah. I. N- <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> My kid kicked me really low, and I tried not to say anything. I'm sorry. My baby kicked me right in the vagooter, <laughs> and it was shocking. <laughs> Apologies. Okay, so two, I guess. Um, <laughs> Wait, what was one? That, oh, whatever okay. <laughs> that was. Um, Mosby has not been here the whole time. So those of you who are viewing on YouTube who are going to be like, oh my God, are we just going to ignore the fact that the magic dog just appeared? <laughs> he wasn't here for the first like 20 some minutes. It's he funny just decided to get up. Corey watched our last, not the yeah. one that we did, but the previous one where I talk about his nostrils. That was a one he fucking decided to watch. <laughs> no. And he was like, well, where'd the dog come from? Yeah. Did I he was, mention his nostrils? Oh, I was upstairs <gasps> taking a shit. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and it was a tough boy. <laughs> and all of a sudden I hear, hey, Sierra, why the fuck are you talking about my nostrils? <laughs> oh, no. I was like, no. No. <laughs> That he knew. Oh, you're not supposed to see that. <laughs> Why the fuck are you watching the podcast? You never watch the podcast. Literally, he's missed like the last 100. <laughs> and he's like, this is the one I think I'll do it a lot. Me thinks me wants to see this. So I came down and me I was ears like, are burning. I was like, hey, how mad are you? Should I come down or should I wait? He was fine with it. So I think I have to ship for the next three days. <laughs> he was like more upset that I said that I could talk shit because he never listens. <laughs> And I was like, you're right, that was wrong. Where's the lie? I'm Bucko? sorry. But um other third, third three. So a lot of you guys have suggested, <laughs> because I keep forgetting whether or not I start the camera, that I put a mirror up. What you don't know is this is not the entirety of the room. Behind the camera, <laughs> there is a larger part of a room. Mm-hmm. We're in the basement. So Behind you is a playroom, and I'm not going to put a mirror in the middle of the room, and I'm not going to... Because she has small children that play yeah. down here. I'm not going to, like, move it every time. It would just be, like, a nuisance, and I yeah. can't hang it on the wall because the wall's too far. We are blind. We've said that. I have an astigmatism, and I, Both with these do. big lights, I will never be able to see it. No. Um, but I just started... Um, saying that I saw the light and snapping, and like that is helping me it know didn't, for sure. Because she went back. Into well, the I, <laughs> I didn't sit down before. That's true. That was important. Yeah, that's called growth. Yeah, and I'm I'm proud of you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm proud of me too. Oh my gosh. Welcome. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about imaginary friends. Okay. I have a video from Noah. You he has do? some words that okay. he would like to say. Well. Let's hold it up and turn it all the way up. We may have to put this audio in later because when we tried to do the audio... It didn't work. Yeah, we had to overlay it well, for the 100th episode. Well, I can send you the video okay. if you need to. Okay, are we ready? Oh, yeah. Hi, guys. So, so there will be 
in the podcast today, but I'm going to show you how imaginary friends work. So it all starts off with a kid getting bored, and they have no one to play with. Usually they're like, oh man, I have nothing to do, and then their imagination comes in, which brings them new friends as imaginary friends, because that's where imaginary friends come from, imagination. Oh! So really, imaginary friends are just the kid getting bored and wanting to make a new friend. And so why do you think this happens? Do you think it happens because they don't have anybody else to play with? Yeah, it probably happens because they probably don't have a brother or they don't have a brother yet or something. And it's like the end of school, so they have no one to play with. And that's how it happens. I see. Did you ever have an imaginary friend? Yeah, I still do. Oh, what's his name? Her name? is His. Invisible Noah. Invisible Noah. Because Nella. I really couldn't think of anything else when I was that little. Yeah. And so is it is it like you or is he a different person? Than different you? person. Different person. So he doesn't look like you. Well, he's invisible. No, he looks so. like me. Oh, so he looks like you. Well, I don't know what he looks like. He's invisible. <laughs> but if you, if you could see him, he would look like you? Yeah. Probably. I don't know. Okay. He's invisible. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else you want to say? Like on my mom's podcast. <laughs> Thank you. I forgot you said that. So you guys have to like our podcast and subscribe for Noah. Dang. Um, so He's I a wanted, real hype guy, isn't he? <laughs> yes. I wanted to talk to him a little bit because I do remember he had Invisible Noah for a very long time. Really? Well, Invisible Noah would do all the all the bad things that we found. Mm. If I came in and I was like, hey, why is there a crayon? It was always Invisible Noah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Never- so he created an invisible scapegoat. <laughs> yes. But that comes into play here. So well, let's talk about why. You had an invisible friend. Emblin. Which is wild because someone in the Fangents group <laughs> said that she lived in a yellow house. Her and name is Emily? Emil, Emilyn, maybe? Emily but, or Emmeline or Emmeline? Yeah, something like that. And her, and her I think sister, sister called her Emmeline, right? Because she couldn't say her name, yes. Yes, and, and she grew up in a big yellow house, which is exactly what you said yep. your imaginary friend Emmeline lived in, which is wild. weird. How did I come up with that, and how is she a real person? I know. Does she rock climb? Because Emberlyn was a great rock <laughs> What? I don't think you mentioned this last oh, time. Oh, I forgot. This is more information. She was an incredible rock <laughs> How old were you when you were when you had this imaginary friend? Like, I think it was probably from like three to seven. Yeah. That is an inc- an insane job to give your imaginary friend. I don't and know why. Yeah. Well, best wishes, MB. <laughs> it's it's interesting because it says sometimes. Children will use their imaginary friends to play out situations that they wouldn't see themselves in. Mm. So, like, because oh. I was such a cautious, yeah. like, kind of scaredy cat kid, I think I created her in my mind to be, like, my alter ego and, um, you know, be adventurous. Yeah. She was, like, an event. I could live my wanted adventures through Emberlyn. Hmm. Um, okay, so just a little... An Australian study says that 65% of all children have imaginary friends and that as many as two-thirds of children, typically between the ages of three to eight, will have an imaginary friend. I'm in the minority here. You I did not one. have an imaginary friend. My sister did. Oh, I have to tell you, it's a good thing. Is it? It is. It is a good thing. So I want to say, too, this was a <laughs> suggestion from Rachel from For Better and Worse podcast. She heard us mention your imaginary friend and she was like, was like about you it. should talk about where imaginary friends come from and see if you guys want to share your imaginary friend stories with us yeah. we'd love to share them sometime please so um it says we can't say how many children by the way we'll link this article that i'm using because i'm gonna just like straight read from it because i'll yeah. be honest we just switched the episode topic like yesterday (laughs) yeah (laughs) so this is very like not super researched but it's a really good article Mm -hmm. and i like it so they can't say exactly how many article um it's from cars for kids parenting parenting parenting.carsforkids.org and it's why do kids have imaginary friends and got it yeah so um they imaginary friends are common enough um to be relatively harmless 
harness. <laughs> they, they were harnesses. Her, her rock <laughs> Yeah. Um, having an imaginary friend actually can have a lot of benefits for children. So an imaginary friend might offer the child a way to try out and practice new skills without getting laughed at. Mm. It was like really sad. So because, sad. Yeah. Um, children may, for instance, use imaginary friends to pl- practice language and social skills. Ooh. Imaginary friends can also help children talk through their situations, think of solutions to problems, or vent their emotions, which is so cool. Yeah. Children who have imaginary friends are not typically loners. So I was thinking about so this. So Noah was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell him what he <laughs> You idiot. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> look like fools. <laughs> I... I don't think my child's an idiot. Please don't. Somebody's like, oh my God. Yeah. She called her children. What a self deprecating. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Can you tell I'm still not over that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, they don't have issues with managing or keeping friends. And an imaginary friend is not a replacement for a real friend, but it's a sign of the child's resourcefulness. So the child with the imaginary friend is a child who has found a way to cope with their feelings and problems. Oh, well, that's good. In a so, good way. So why is it good that I didn't have one? I said it's good that I did. <laughs> oh, oh. So I'm the weirdo? Well, I don't think you're weird. I think you had enough people in your life that you you grew up with two other sisters who were always around, and you had a pretty solid friend group. So, like, I feel like you could talk through. They were things. fighting with me literally every other day for I fun was, at recess. Uh, your friend group, <laughs> okay, and you still had an imaginary friend when I was. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know if you guys can hear Mosby, but he's like, "Hey, Mosby, relax, but." <laughs> Sounds like me trying to get out of bed. <laughs> no. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so... I don't think it's about... I just think that you were already probably really good at thinking... You're, you've always been pretty in tune with your feelings and talking out mm. issues. And so I don't think you needed help. But am I helping? <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I don't think I it's... Guess. Yeah. Plus... <laughs> He has allergies. I know. My dog does too. That's why I'm like, I know these are allergies. He like stinks. <laughs> um, do you, are you sure you didn't though? Because a lot of times they happen like before you can remember. Like Between- the only reason I knew about Emblem was because we have it on video. I don't remember her. I have people talking to me about her and it was caught on video. That's weird to me. Yeah. It's weird to me to think that you can watch a video of yourself that you don't remember, but you lived it. Yes. Like, that's strange to me. Very. Because, like, is that memory locked in my mind somewhere, or did I just, like, erase it from my brain? Mm -hmm. Because, like, that, the only reason I can remember stuff that's happened within the last one and a half years is because we recorded it. (laughs) I know. It's so funny. By the way, people who ask me questions and they're like, do you remember when this happened? It, no, it was two years ago that we <laughs> recorded it. I don't even know what the fuck we were talking about. I did remember someone made a comment that was like, hey, you were talking about Grey's Anatomy and Owen choked Christina, yeah, not, not Amelia. Amelia. And I was like, I am certain we corrected that <laughs> in the next episode. Because we had Grey's Anatomy fans that were like, hey, wait. Yeah. Even back then when we had 10 listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mitch told me very quickly <laughs> yes. that I was wrong. Um, okay, so this is this part is really cool. So there's two different ways that children have of relating to their imaginary friends. They might have a hierarchical relationship with their imaginary friend or an egalitarian. egalitarian. So like an ego-driven? Well, the hierarchical relationship either... Like an authority figure over them? Either the child or the imaginary friend is dominant. So one of Got them is it. more powerful. One of them tells the other what to do. Got it. In the egalitarian relationship, the imaginary friend and the child are equals. Got it. Got it. Got it. So I think that in Noah's, there was a hierarchical situation because mm-hmm. he told me that Invisible Noah was the reason he would do bad things. Right. And he was kind of bossing Which him around. Which is scary because I... So Sierra looked up like the the why and I just looked up examples yeah and some of the ex- I didn't include a lot of examples because they were fucking scary yeah they were like oh my stepbrother went to live with someone else because he said his imaginary friend made him kill the neighbor's dog <gasps> and I'm like yo that's scary oh okay well mm, I'm not sure that's an imaginary <laughs> friend I know well and that was another thing because I didn't know what you were going to tell me yeah if a 
because I don't know where imaginary friends come from. Yeah. And if it's a trauma response, like I in no way want to make light of sure. how a kid or anyone is uh, learning to cope with something that's going on. But that to or me seems that very... it's a mental health disorder that's like undiagnosed and yeah. out of control. And it would be hard to differentiate. But these imaginary friends, I think what the majority of children have are more of this style, yeah. which is like a healthy coping. That sounds different. Yes. Like, um, and I don't think I included those ones yeah. because I would never want to speak about someone's... Um, a traumatic thing that happened in their childhood or that yeah. they did in their childhood. Yeah. Or, yeah. Well, I mean, there's some, but it was not like... I don't think I included those ones. Yeah. Um, okay, so the hierarchical relationship, the imaginary friend might boss the child around. Um, other ways is that the imaginary friend is under the child's command and must serve the child's wishes. So this could be comforting to a child who is bossed around by her peers or her like adult figures mm-hmm. her whole life. Um, finally, she gets to tell someone else what's what to do, and that's that really has to fucking obey her. sad, isn't it? So fucking sad. I know. Oh, that part like broke me when yeah. I heard. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Children who have the egalitarian relationships with their imaginary friends tend to be better than their peers at social coping. They're already good at managing friendships and social situations, and interacting with their imaginary friend may be the child's way of practicing and improving their existing social skills. So having an imaginary friend gives the child a chance to practice both sides of the conversation, and that teaches the child the best way to get their point across, Hmm. which is very interesting. And I think that's what me and Embolin had. Well, I did that as an adult it wasn't with another person i would just talk to myself well that's the thing so it says in here oh my god this is the next sentence if you think about it you as an adult probably have imagined a conversation with a friend or acquaintance maybe you don't like the way you handled an interaction at a party you may reenact that conversation in your mind with different endings you're thinking what would have happened if i said this instead of that this is very much like the conversations that children have with their imaginary friends see I was, Barbara told me that's a trauma response. Really? Yeah. Because I'm trying to control the outcome the of the situation. Sure. And I am uh, beating myself up about what I should have done when we've already yeah. talked about how you need to get should out of your vocabulary. Right. Well, maybe the um, way you go about it is yeah, yeah, a yeah. little bit. But like, even even in as a child, if they are talking through a conversation because I, I told her like I will go through a conversation in my head in so many different ways and if when I get to the end of the conversation obviously anticipating what the other person is going to respond with if I don't think it's going to end well yeah uh, then I just won't ever have the conversation yeah so I imagine maybe a kid is having is able to practice that have that conversation without actually having to have that conversation. And it says it, it lets them like vent things that maybe they can't do in front of um, like at school or in front yeah. of their parents, like vent that anger out, mm-hmm. which is a good thing because yeah, I just got violent. Yeah. Maybe I needed a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Yeah. Um, I would just like hit one of my sisters and then they'd cry and I go, don't tell mom. Don't <laughs> tell mom. You know what would happen is I would accidentally or they would accidentally hit me mm-hmm. and I would just deck them back like they did it intentionally. It was like an eye for an eye. <laughs> and then I would be like, don't tell. Come Fuck on. What, what are you, snitches? What are you, we children? <laughs> Grow up. We don't tattle. There's no tattling. Okay. <laughs> huh? Oh, that's terrible. But if you think about it, it is interesting that we kind of do the same thing as these kids and the only difference is our imagination isn't what theirs are. We can't right. physically, we're not physically seeing the person that we're having a conversation to, yeah. but it's all happening in our mind. Like we're visualizing. You know what I wonder, though, is I'm really curious about the imagination in general. Me too. Because who's to say that stuff isn't real? You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) You lost me. (laughs) Well, I'm thinking about the movie Hook. Have you ever seen Hook? No, I haven't. With Robin Williams? It's an amazing movie. Mm. It's like Peter Pan. Yeah, I knew um, of it. But Peter Pan got married and had kids. He grew up. He's Robin Williams. Oh. And he forgot that he was Peter Pan. (gasps) Oh. And then he goes back. He goes back because Hook takes his kids. Yes, I do. I have seen this movie. Okay. It was just like in the 90s. Yes. So long ago. So. And Hook has a, the alligator in his arm. Yeah. Am yeah. I right? Yeah. Okay. But that's like in also normal Peter Pan. I never watched. Like, Peter Pan was not my jazz. <laughs> I agree. Okay. <laughs> but. Maybe it was because of the, the boys. <laughs> a lot of focus on them. Yeah. Kind of over it. Yeah. But. 
in that there is this like big long table and Peter Pan, Robin Williams is so hungry and they're they all of the feast. lost boys. Yeah, they imagine a feast and he's like, you don't remember. Like you can't see it because you don't, your you imagination. No yeah, and so he closes his eyes and he starts like imagining it and then all of a sudden this food appears. So I, in my mind, am like, is that a fucking thing? <laughs> is it a th- not not that I can imagine a hamburger right now <laughs> in this year, dude? If that would happen, but like as a child, if you're if you're not like closed off, because I know when it comes to like the spirit world, mm-hmm. if you are closed off to it, if you're like I'm afraid, I want nothing to do with that, they won't, won't show themselves to you, to you. Yeah. right? But if you're open to it, then more like you're more in tune and connected to the universe it's like portals are open as a kid potentially i don't know dick from shit remember guys <laughs> but i don't know that's interesting right interesting theory like or, did we just become blinded to stuff that is actually there but i don't know because you know? have you ever watched videos of you again this is like a video that i have of like me playing and like talking with my barbie i tried to do that recently <laughs> you did yeah because i was like why was this so fun and i was like hey bitch what's up yeah and i was like this sucks i used to play barbies for hours and i could imagine whole scenarios yes. and not be talking can you imagine <laughs> If you walked in and someone's just like <laughs> quietly moving their bark. Yeah. I always made them pregnant. <laughs> I think uh-huh. I've talked about that. Um, and then there was always like a love triangle situation. Mm-hmm. So like how would I have known about that? But I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I don't want to say how you probably knew about that. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so seems like I probably saw some things I shouldn't. Have. <laughs> wow, that's an interesting revelation <laughs> that you just had right here. <laughs> I wonder why I thought of these. <laughs> so it turns out my imagination's gone probably because of my trauma, <laughs> yeah. much like most of my childhood memories. <laughs> I think that would be such a fun game. What did you do with your Barbies and how is it connected to your trauma? <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> it's very funny. Um, okay. So imaginations are used to think about the future for the child or to solve problems. And their imaginary friend can be a guide or a comfort of a way to like understand things in the world. The imaginary friend is there by command when the child is bored or lonely. So Noah did kind of get that right. The imaginary child is not always there. It's just yeah. like when he's not at school or when he needs a friend. He's yeah. right there. Um, that weirds me out because I can't not think that they're real. Like yeah. in my head, your imaginary friend exists. Yeah. And like, I don't know. Noah's is invisible, Noah. His imagination wasn't too Is he great. still there? He says he's still yeah, there. Yeah, he says he still has him. But I haven't heard him talk about him or talk to him for a while. But how much more stable is his life now? Very. So really, it could, and, and it says, um, I'll have to get to that part. Hold on. It said, the imaginary friend can soften a difficult or stress-filled time. For instance, when the child is adjusting to a new sibling or even a new home. Now, when Noah was developing, Invisible Noah, was when his dad was having a new baby and mm-hmm. when I was going through all my moves. Right. So, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I wondered if it would be connected to something like that. And I wondered if that's why I didn't have one because yeah. I didn't go through a move. My parents didn't get separated during formative years of my life. Right. Like, my parents are still together. I just <laughs> <laughs> had to specify. Yeah. Because mine did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that's the Barbies. <laughs> and then, you know, let's go back to that part. <laughs> you know, connect those dots. <laughs> uh, while one was pregnant, can you even... <laughs> so, anyways. <laughs> This is just like all coming back to me. Wow. This feels like a real, like a live stream of a therapy session. <laughs> it does. Thank you guys for being here with me. 
I appreciate you all. Um, the good thing with imaginary friends is that they're forgiving. So children can yell, vent their anger, um, practice scenarios where they're not maybe yeah. the way that they should handle social situations. And the imaginary friend will still be there. So it's like unconditional. Yes. Which means they can project unconditional love for themselves. Yes. Which means at our core, we can find unconditional yes. love for ourselves. Oh my God. I know. This is such a fun thing to talk about. I'm glad you decided this for us. Because <laughs> I'm learning hey, a lot. Rachel, thank you so much. Yeah, it is good stuff. Okay, so let me just give you a quick list of some of the things that I imaginary. Started it. I started it. I started it. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Did you clap? Yes. Okay. A list of some of the many things that imaginary friends can do. They provide companionship. Give the child a, tri- uh, a chance to try different ways of doing things. Allow the child to play in a more creative way. Offer a safe, sp- a safe place to practice their people skills. Permit the child to test out strong emotions, anger, fear, um, let the child be the one in charge, the boss, when the child may be feeling powerless or vulnerable in real life. Empower the child to experience a rich internal private life that is safe from others' eyes. And grant comfort when the child is stressed out by being there with unconditional love and acceptance. Cute. Oh, I love that. So this is what... S- how nice that I never did that for myself. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Well, maybe now that explains a lot. <laughs> maybe now, if Bubba's not a ghost, <laughs> he can be Ollie's imaginary friend. Maybe <sighs> we'll see. Well, if you can get off the ceiling, that'd be great. <laughs> can you come down here and play with me? <laughs> yeah, jeez. Um, so, what can you as parents learn from your child's imaginary friend? Uh, it can help parents spot problems. So if the imaginary friend is afraid of something, for instance, mm. the dark, dogs, the child may be wrestling with this fear and may be using the imaginary friend to express it because they're yeah. either afraid or ashamed to express it themselves. That's a big thing. Noah used to say, I had to keep the light on because invisible Noah was afraid of the dark mm. all the time. And I was like, okay. I feel like you're deal. projecting. Yeah. <laughs> invisible <Seeable Noah>. Noah. <laughs> <laughs> looks like yeah I was gonna say see a board I'm like you just fucking said that um, if the imaginary friend is always getting into trouble it may be a sign that the child feels overwhelmed with too many rules and then on the other side if the imaginary friend is used as the child's scapegoat to get out of getting in trouble um, well, it doesn't say anything about that <laughs> it just they're like that, just be concerned it just says that your child may blame their misbehavior on their imaginary friend which my so child what, they did. Just are afraid of accountability at that point? Yeah, probably. Or just a way to not get in trouble. Yeah. Well, it says um, when that happens, parents should see this as an opportunity. So, like, let's say that a mirror gets broken. A parent might say, like, and, and the child says, you know, my friend did it. The parent might say that everyone has accidents and makes mistakes. Don't worry. The broken window can be cleaned and replaced. So then you just do that and the next time the child wants the child can see that you still love him even when there's mistakes made or messes so in that moment it can be a teachable moment to be like oh tell your friend it's okay everybody makes mistakes you know we'll clean it up it's not a big deal that way the next time the child knows that they are safe to come to you now if you flip shit hey remember when you were like real nice about invisible Noah breaking that thing (laughs) it turns out (laughs) (laughs) me also broke something (laughs) sorry and then you can say, tell your friend I love him even when mistakes happen. Mm. So, um, imaginary friend. Tell your friend he's going to pay for that. <laughs> tell your friend I need 50 fucking dollars. <laughs> yeah. That was a home goods. <laughs> or a gnome goods. Gnome goods? Oh. Remember that's what all those people. Gnome hoods. <laughs> yeah, gnome hoods. Um, imaginary friends are their ch- are the child's cushion. So children have to take in an enormous amount of information as they're growing up, and the world can seem like a really big and scary place for them. If their imaginary friends give their children a safe way to practice what to say and do, it makes their world a little safer and e- easier to take in, and that's a good thing. Remember that imaginary friends are a sign that your child is good at finding ways to cope and move forward, and be glad that your child has an imaginary friend. Because this is a benefit for them in their Mm. development. It's a really cool phenomenon, and it will all be over before you can blink, hopefully leaving some really awesome memories. The two, and not three, of you can share for a lifetime. Um, I'll tell you. The end. 
Not a single one of these. <laughs> Sounds like they were a good kind. Sounds like it was a good thing. <laughs> All right. I'll be honest. Okay. Well, sometimes it can be weird. Like I remember Emlyn. I thought I think her brother died or she died at one point. I came up with this. How horrific is that? Uh, terrifying. Like honestly. why did I do that? But again, in my child mind, there must have been a reason. Maybe I saw it on TV and I was trying to process like th- grief and death and understand it. Probably. Because I didn't know anybody back then that had died. Right. And so maybe for me, it was something that I witnessed or heard someone else do. And so I was trying to like talk about it as if it happened to someone else so that I can get like a, an a adult's yeah. opinion on yeah, it. Yeah, there's maybe? some that was like very just like kind of like Noah. And then uh-huh. there were others who were like you who had like full lives mm-hmm. for these people. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here's one. This went viral because it's a note that a teacher sent home. <gasps> um. And I'm just going to read the note that the teacher sent home. Okay. Although this is not a behavior letter as such, I am writing to inform you of something that has come to our attention and that you may wish to discuss further with your son. Blank and a few of his friends often make up characters, give them amusing names, and then they have exciting adventures at playtime. This in itself is an imaginative and creative pastime and causes no harm. However, it has come to our attention that one of the characters has the name Wildo the Dildo. <laughs> No. <laughs> and this has I am sure you can understand <laughs> raise some concerns with us. <laughs> On further discussion, none of the children said they knew what that meant, but were aware sure. that it was inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that from Noah a lot. He'll be like, "Hey mom, what's this word?" cuz people at school say it and it's funny. And I was like, "That is not funny. Do not ever say that word again." <laughs> it is not in your vocabulary. <laughs> One of the children said they picked up the word on the playground, so we will be following this up further and dealing with it accordingly. I hope you can appreciate the reason I'm informing you of this matter, and please do not hesitate to contact me if you wish to discuss it further. I just think it's fucking hysterical. That's a really good name. To think that a kid was running around a playground. Wildo with, the dildo. <laughs> with Wildo the dildo. Uh, that's a good name. Okay, so you ready for this one? Okay. This one is fucking scary. Oh, I'm scared. His name was Mr. Nobody. I got these from BuzzFeed. <laughs> are you shocked? That just gave me a, some of these me are, a cringe down in my hoodie. Some of these are from BuzzFeed, and uh, I think I have a couple from Reddit. Okay, so his name was Mr. Nobody. He started as the person the kids would blame if no none. Oh, my God. Sorry. The kids would blame if one of them forgot to flush the toilet. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, Noah still blames Invisible Noah for that. <laughs> And then his mythology evolved. For the record, all of this was conceived by three of my kids who at the time were six, five, and three years old. The fact that all All of of them them? agreed that Mr. Nobody existed to me is terrifying. But I wonder if one of them said it and the other ones just like took it on as like, oh, it'll be my friend now. Mr. Nobody has no eyes. Nope. No teeth. Oh my God. No tongue and no nose. He doesn't wear pants. Is he a jack o' lantern? <laughs> Is he a pumpkin? And, and leaves the used toilet paper between his butt cheeks <laughs> so you can tell where he is by his smell. What? He doesn't wear a shirt, but has a pocket cut into his skin where he keeps the key to our house. <laughs> Wait. He can be invisible. He's had a beard since he was a baby. He bites off his fingernails and then drips blood where he walks. Thankfully, been a few years since Mr. Nobody has been in our house. <sighs> Mr. Nobody's fucking terrifying. Mr. Nobody just gave me like my asshole so <laughs> clenched. Right well, he's not a pumpkin because he has butt cheeks and he keeps toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> but what if he's like a pumpkin with a body? What was that guy's name? Ichabod Crane. <laughs> Ichabod? <laughs> sure. I Wasn't think he was- like decapitated and then he has a pumpkin head? That was the Headless Horseman who, I think, killed Ichabod Crane. Oh, sure. Whatever. (laughs) I was really terrified of the Headless Horseman. Me too. I had a nightmare where the Headless Horseman um, cut my head off, (gasps) and he was driving an Amish buggy. And the next day... You told us about this, I think, in the podcast. He was... There was an Amish buggy on my street. With a Headless (laughs) Horseman driving There was a a young girl and a a guy. Uh, Both of them (laughs) had their heads. (laughs) Not a pumpkin in sight. (laughs) Oh. Okay. This one's called A Watchful Companion. 
Our youngest daughter asked us to keep our bedroom door open when her imaginary friend couldn't open doors. We laughed it off and figured she was just afraid and wanted to be able to see us. See, that's the stuff. Oh, my imaginary friend wants to be able to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um... We laughed it off and figured she was just afraid and wanted to be able to see us or know we were home if she woke up in the middle of the night. The next day, I casually asked what her friend did at night, and she said she'd like to stand at the end of our bed and watch us sleep. No! We asked how often she speaks with her, and she said she really only likes to talk and come out at night. We asked her to draw a picture of her friend, and the drawing showed really sharp teeth and a lump on her head. We eventually moved, and her friend didn't come with us, but our daughter said she'd probably find us. That was eight years ago. We haven't heard about her since we moved. I hope she's lost. (laughs) These are ghost stories. These are not imaginary friends. I googled imaginary friend stories and I even typed in funny ones and they're like, we have nothing for you. Here's fucking scary things. Dude, child, I'm actually, do you ever get scared and then your eyes well up and you can't stop it? Um, That's what's happening. (laughs) Yeah. Things that happen to children with like... When you read... When you read that one ghost story and I told you you can't read any more to me because it scared the fucking shit out of me. Do you remember what it was? Oh, no. This woman was pregnant uh-huh. and you told me the story while I was pregnant. Uh-huh. And she... When did I read this? Was it on the podcast? Yeah. She got up in the middle of the night. Oh, yeah. And remember when it's like stood at her and stared at herself in the mirror or something like that? I don't remember because it fucking scared me. I couldn't listen to it. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I'm crying. <laughs> That's so scary. When did we talk about that? We did a ghost stories episode. We did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My memory fucking sucks. <laughs> Good thing we haven't documented. Okay. Samantha the Monstressed. I don't know. Oh, I'm monstressed out right now. <laughs> <laughs> when my daughter was four years old, she had two friends. When we lived in a rental house, one was named Samantha. Samantha would insist on staying in my daughter's room most of the time. Then my daughter would say that Samantha had to go to bed, and we asked where her bed was. She very nonchalantly told us she leaves the house when it gets dark and goes out to the back door to sleep under the grass. Okay, under the grass? Like in the dirt? Under the grass. We opted not to investigate further. The other was a man that she called Monstressed, or something close to that. He was very nice, according to her, and had long black hair and wore tan pants and funny shoes with no shirt. She said... Sounds like one of my (laughs) (laughs) ex-boyfriends. She said he was usually covered in blue and white and would come walk around the house and the yard, hang around... a football fan? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and listen to music if we had some on. It would stand in the front yard until morning. <gasps> I know that was the part that fucked me up. Like, don't no, just stand in my yard don't until just morning. Stand there. Hey, if you're a ghost, hey, if we have any hey, ghosts, did you mow me? the grass? Did you move around like a little bit? Don't oh just my gosh. Stand. All my neighbors have like their yards edged or whatever. Why do people do that? Could you who do are that? You trying to if you're going to be in my yard all night, could you like make yourself useful? Who are you trying to impress? And could, will you come do mine? <laughs> Honestly. Edge me right now. (laughs) I'm edging right now. (laughs) My three-year-old started talking about her friend Arlo, telling us stuff Mm -hmm. she did that was funny. We assumed she was talking about a friend of hers. Arlo? Yeah. That's a girl? No, her friend was Arlo. I don't know if... Arlo was a girl or not. Yeah. Oh, no, I guess Arlo's a girl. Well, that's beautiful. We assumed she was talking about a friend of hers from school. I think it's cute for like... Either. Yeah. That's what I mean. I love that. Um, you know me with the androgynous names. Yeah. I'm in, I'm, I have I'm, one. Yes. <laughs> I'm obsessed. Uh, we assumed she was talking about a friend of hers from school and made up stories about them playing together, but we came to find out that there was no Arlo at her school. Mm. Around this time, it got warmer outside and a new ice cream man started coming around. Our daughter wanted to know why he played music, and we obviously didn't want to listen to her beg for ice cream six times a day all summer long so we told her that he's just the music man and comes to play music this was right when lockdown was in full effect and there wasn't much to do she hadn't hung out with many other kids in the past couple weeks one day she heard the ice cream man and excitedly told us he's not a music man he's an ice cream man who sells ice cream she said arlo told me that you lied and said he was a music man dad we asked where Arlo, Arlo you lived, bitch. <laughs> and she told us she lived in her closet. <gasps> and she's just like, hey, your parents are fucking lying to you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, real quick. Hey. hey. They're fucking liars. <laughs> That's There's an ice, ice cream. cream. Get me two. SpongeBob's <laughs> nose is a gumball. 
<laughs> and it's it's gonna taste really bad. Those have been in the freezer since oh nine. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> yeah, I actually got one. There was an ice cream truck that went by our house the other the other day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like two months ago. Um, <laughs> everything's the other day. Mm-hmm. Uh. And Noah got a Spongebob one, of course. And I got strawberry shortcake because those are my favorites. Mm -hmm. And I bit into it and I was like, that is literally tasted like plastic. Expired. (laughs) Yes, I was like, that tastes terrible. The cone was soggy. It was disgusting. I'm like, I don't know why whenever I read these stories, I imagine that they happened in like the 80s. Me too. When she so, said lockdown, I was like, what? We're not in a 1950s cathedral house right now. Yeah. And I'm not in a long flowing 1950s. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> oh, yeah. I will. It, but when I was thinking about like imaginary friends, because that one part that I read where it said like it's not a bad thing, I was picturing movies where they're like, you know, we have to crush this. You know, yeah. stop it. The imaginary friends has to stop. Whatever, yep. and it's always scary movies. So I'm like, yeah, it's, and they're old. Yes, in Victorian houses. Yes, my they sister just, just got a Victorian house, and I'm like, there's no way that's not haunted. I 100. I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> it's, it's a haunted. beautiful house. It's but haunted. The second that she showed the picture, I was like, that is for sure haunted. I feel it. I feel yes. it in my bones. I think she knows it too. Oh wow. Well. well, any house she goes to is haunted because I think she's haunted. But yeah. Oh. <laughs> Okay, his Good name was Chickenhead. Oh my god. I think we're all haunted. Anyway, his name was Chickenhead. He was a chicken that lived in my attic and ate c- cardboard for sustenance. He was my Sorry, friend. Sorry, wait a minute. Chickenhead <laughs> eats cardboard? <laughs> yeah, for sustenance. C- cardboard. <laughs> cardboard. Chickenhead <laughs> eats cardboard. Uh, what? How does this child know what sustenance is? Well, they're writing it as an adult. I know, but like... So they're <laughs> they're using bigger words. <laughs> I don't agree with that. He was my friend and advisor for many years. And to, I certainly don't think as a child he considered this chicken a, an advisor. <laughs> he wasn't like, oh, kid, riddle me this. Uh, all right. <laughs> no. Um, he was my friend and advisor for many years until he went off to college and to travel the world. He also had something called type Q blood, which was... <laughs> Type Q diabetes? <laughs> no. <laughs> type Q blood, which gave him superpowers. Okay. So there's that. Oh, that's it? Yep. Just about chicken heads got a, I almost said diabetes. <laughs> well, that was one of the ones where I'm like, okay, he was his advisor, and then he went to college and traveled the world, but he did have type Q blood, and it did give him superpowers. What? Did he really have a chicken's head? It was a chicken. It was a chicken. It was a chicken that lived in his attic. Was this chicken real? <laughs> Was Embolin real? The rock climbing person? Who yes, had we the tried tragic to her on the internet. <laughs> Okay. Fair enough. What if this person is not real and she just Googled that yellow house and was like, it's me. I oh am my her. God, here's my house. Yeah. It really did look like the yellow house that I. I think you're full of shit. Yeah, I don't remember shit. About I want you to not be full of shit, though. I know. I hope um, it's real. <laughs> uh, okay. When I was four years old, I met my imaginary friend in my patio. I originally gave him a really complex fantasy name, but I kept forgetting it and called him Georgie. He had a brother, Jeremiah, <laughs> sister Buttercup. <laughs> Jeremiah is the most beautiful name I've ever heard. Mark my words. If I have a boy next time, Jeremiah, Gregory Jeremiah. <laughs> okay but this is the kind of story where i i'm saying it has a full backstory okay i'm scared um no it's not i don't think it's scary it's not scary okay his dad worked for a software company in Nicaragua. <laughs> Look, how does this, she knows this? That's what I'm saying. His dad worked for a software company in Nicaragua, and they lived in a futuristic version of the Berenstein Bears house. Okay. I would always visit their house and eat stewed beef. Wait, you went to Nicaragua? Nicaragua? He worked for the company in Nicaragua. I don't think they lived there. But this, he went to his imaginary friend's house. He went to Georgie's house. I used to go to Emmeline's house. What the fuck? <laughs> you went to her house? Yes. Was it nice? Yeah. Oh, It was beautiful. Everything inside of it was yellow and some flowery. Wow. It was yellow everything. That was my favorite color. What, what did you here? do there? What did I do there? Yeah. Rock climbing. <laughs> we practiced 
rock climbing for sure. I think I was actually playing in my attic. And maybe I was just trying to pretend like it was a really great place because my attic sucked and there was big ants in it and it was scary. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, okay. this is a beautiful yellow house that we're in in Berlin. But he, he went, I went always visit their house and eat stewed beef and drink beetle juice, which I thought was juice harvested from beetle gase. For some reason, instead of Georgie living at my house, he stayed at my house for months at a time and went to his home for a week. So, like, for me, the home was across the hallway. It was, like, it, not my home. That's so weird. Yeah, what? but it was a room that I never went into, so I could picture that it wasn't actually a part of my house. Wow. Why did my mom let me play in the attic? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that is upsetting. Hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I met Jeremiah <laughs> Buttercup <laughs> when I was six. Oh, and so we they hunted came later. ghosts. Later that <laughs> year, <laughs> goats. <laughs> I like your, ver- I like your version. <laughs> uh, and we hunted ghosts. Later that year, their mom went missing, and Georgie suspected the father. The next day, the dad beat Georgie for ten minutes straight before the police arrived. <gasps> I can't begin to imagine what the neighbors would think when they saw a six-year-old swinging a yellow plastic baseball bat in the air and on the asphalt of my driveway. So I think he was trying to fight off the dad. Oh, my God. After he witnessed di- it? That is so <laughs> horrific. He thought of it. Oh, my God. He imagined it. After the dad went to prison, the kids stayed at their grandma's place in Arabia, but a tornado killed her and their cousin when I was nine. <laughs> oh, three years later. After that, Buttercup graduated high school, married Jerkamiah. Wait, <laughs> this is real geek turning into Game of Thrones. Uh-huh. And moved to Israel to raise sheep. Georgie didn't want to go. in Israel? Mm-hmm. I'm so confused. So we trapped his siblings in my closet. Sure. That's logical. <laughs> After As that, a nine-year-old. <laughs> After that, Georgie was relegated to someone to talk to and nothing more. He died when I was 11. He died? <laughs> What happened to the brother and sister locked in? Are they still in the closet? <laughs> Are they still together? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> I love a love story. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I have a lot of I have a lot of thoughts about that one. Yeah. And none of them make any sense. Well, so, none of that made any sense. I, I'm just curious. Okay, so what I'm thinking because I know it happens a lot now because mm-hmm. of Screens and things like that. Um, but in the 90s, we consumed a lot of television. Yes. Or maybe it was just me. But I know that that was like a thing where mm-hmm. p- people were like, oh, if it's educational, it's fine. And so yep. it was just like, or really? Or if it's, if it's um, made for kids, yeah, quote like unquote. Yeah, like a Disney movie. But or- we look at like All Real Monsters or Ren and Stimpy and I'm like, why the fuck did anyone were let me watch watching that? that? Yeah. So I'm wondering how much of this came from like television. Yeah. Um, Because, again, I think a lot of that... And my mom used to let it... Like, I watched Baywatch with (laughs) and Friends. And now I watch some of those again. And I'm like, there's a lot of sex stuff happening here. But I didn't know what it was. And to me, it was just, like, cool to watch people almost drown. (laughs) (laughs) And get saved. (laughs) Amazing. (laughs) And then in Friends, I didn't know what I was laughing at. But I was like, these people seem quirky or whatever. Um, I don't know. I'm is just this what being a grown up is like? You just sit in a coffee shop and then <laughs> sit at your friend's house. Yeah. Is that why we're all sad that we don't have people to do that with? <laughs> we're like, it's we weird. got lied to, fucking lied to, hardcore. Um, so I'm wondering if like he consumed some television that that hadn't because I didn't even know like Arabian maybe because of Aladdin, but other than that, I like didn't even know about that until nope. I was in. Middle school, maybe. Yep. Like anything. We still don't know geography. No, we've already told you that. We're still trying to figure out what the UK is. Yeah. Oh, somebody help. Yeah. I do know that there's a place called Eurasia. Yes. And Russia's in there. Well, that's a combination, right? Of Europe and Asia. Yeah, but because Russia split down the mid Yeah. <sighs> One <One-sy-two-sies. laughs> Three Three <That's- laughs> four I have two more. Oh, okay. That you're going to read off the top of your head? No, I, I need to check. <laughs> I was like, look at you go. Four score and seven years ago. Our forefathers brought upon this great earth. Oh my God, do you know more than that? That was it. Wow, good. I think. But we had to recite it before we went to D.C. Yeah, I didn't do that. Oh. They still let me go. What are they going to do? I think they felt bad for me. Probably. Okay. <laughs> 
As a child, my brother used to have a quiet friend whose parents never actually gave him a name. I have a vivid memory of hanging out with him and my brother turns Hold on. I have a vivid I have vivid memories of hanging out with him and my brother. Turns out after quizzing both my brother and my parents about the boy with no name that used to come around that this person never existed. I somehow had an imaginary friend that I projected <gasps> onto my brother and saw as his friend. Whoa! Right? Because, like, here's the thing. I always knew that Emberlyn wasn't real. Like, yeah? I knew that. In the back of my mind, I knew she wasn't real. And people would call her my imaginary friend. Same with Noah. Noah knows Invisible Noah isn't real. Hmm. Like, I don't know if he did when he was younger, but, like, as he got older, he could articulate, like, I know he's not real, but this is my friend and same with me i was like i know she's not real but like to me she's real see so like people like that i want to be like i don't know that seems more of like a you saw something see i remember when my sister would talk about her imaginary friend her imaginary friend was a boy and he had a brother i think and i think that they were not nice Mm. but i she would talk about them like they were next to me and i couldn't see them and it was like frustrating but i never was this your youngest sister no maybe i thought why did i never hear about these people i don't don't remember their names i feel like i do i feel like jimmy Mm. was his name but i remember i don't know and maybe she can tell me if i told her that they weren't real but i feel like i remember them being real and just feeling like i can't see them whoa i don't don't remember it was so crazy i know she had them but um okay last one this is the craziest one. Are you ready? Oh my God, you saved the best for last. I didn't mean to, but I just did. <laughs> when I was a little kid, I had an imaginary friend, a woman with red hair. It me. <laughs> <laughs> my parents were sick and tired of me always talking to myself and considered taking me to a psychologist. Oh, that's mean. The I know. That's how children like process language. And it's also like you made going to see a psychologist or going to see, see someone to talk about things a negative like a punishment yeah. like a hey like, something's wrong with you go hey, see this person you won't stop talking even though you're literally learning language because <sighs> you're a child okay sorry um those plans were dashed one night when my dad came into my room after hearing me talk to myself he told me we were leaving to for the grocery store and i asked if i could bring my friend along my dad wanted to prove to me i was just seeing things and told me he had to meet my friend before they could come with us I looked confused and didn't know what to tell him when suddenly I screamed for joy. She's standing right behind you. (gasps) My parents screamed as our old neighbor who had recently been evicted was found hiding in our closet. (laughs) Is that not wild? So she wasn't imaginary. She was just living in the closet. Did I ever tell you? I, I, I know I've said Are you about to tell time. me someone's living in your closet? <laughs> did I ever tell you about the woman living in my closet? <laughs> no, did I ever tell you that one of my biggest fears is that there's people living in my yeah, walls Yes, so it's and called shit? frogging and I always... Because it's down, frogging? Yes. Oh, interesting. I am like... Because our entire basement, we lived down here while we remodeled. Mm-hmm. I feel like someone could live down here and I'd never know. Yes. Except we're down here a lot. What if they're just listening they to They could us be in like, that other room and we'd never know. Why would you fucking say that? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when Mosby like went back there one time? And I stared? know. And just like hug out for a second and yep. then came back like, mm-hmm. no. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that is what I'm saying. Yeah. People living in the walls situation is like one of the scariest things yeah. that I could picture in my mind. Well, I can give you one scarier. Okay. Bubba crawling on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> that really is upsetting. What so. if Bubba's in the walls? <laughs> Ew. I'm sorry. Why did I do that? I don't know. He's a baby. He can't be in your ceiling. <laughs> or my walls. <laughs> no. Okay. Right. Um. Well... That's that on Imaginary Friends, guys. Thanks yeah. for hanging out. Yeah. We uh, love you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next week, right? Yeah. And also, we want to just remind everybody, you know, go follow us on Instagram. Yeah. Um, at Ladies and Tangents, yeah, correct? Yeah, at Ladies and Tangents. Go follow us on Twitter, at Ladies underscore Tangents. Yeah. Um, go follow us on TikTok. Ladies and Tangents. I think it's Ladies and Tangents or is it Ladies and Tangents podcast? Either way, we're blocked for seven days, so it doesn't fucking matter. Seven days this time? I know. They're mad at us. TikTok. Oh my God. I talked about pissing in the shower. <laughs> Ladies and Tangents. Yeah. That's why we got blocked because we I posted a part where we were asking whether or not we peed in the shower. Uh, you can't talk about waffle stomping your shit down the train anymore. Why? Well, I thought this was America. <laughs> Anywho. Um, 
And then if <laughs> if you have time, you know, leave us a review, like, subscribe, yeah. whatever, download. all the kids. Yeah, download for sure. But definitely, um, just so you know, we have a website that might be happening. And I'm going to yeah. be looking soon for reviews. So if you have a funny one yeah. or a good one that you want to leave. We want to put a few reviews up on the website. Yeah, so... so. And Thanks, it just guys. helps us out and it, you know, hopefully keeps us here for a lot longer. Yeah, so, so more people can find us. Yes. So, yeah, that's it. That's it that on Imaginary Friends. Thanks, guys. All right. We'll see you next week. Okay. We're out. Goodbye. <laughs>